This video is brought to you by Devout Decals, makers of reusable Catholic art for your home altar, your bedroom, and your home classroom. We return now to our multi-month discussion of Pascendi Dominici Gregis, the landmark encyclical by Pope St. Pius X, issued in 1904. This is where the, the heresy of modernism is formally defined by the sovereign pontiff of the time, he who would later go on to promulgate the oath against modernism and would try to eliminate the modernist error from the Catholic Church. His one great failing was that he was not able to completely stop it, partially because his successors, while still dedicated to fighting it to a degree, often because of other things going on, were not able to continue doing so. Pope Benedict XV was Pope during the First World War, Pope Pius XII during the Second. They had other things they were concerned with and had to deal with, so it is understandable. Today we're going to touch on the subject a lot of people will find much more timely, and that is the subject of the relation of faith to science. You're going to hear him recount how the modernist believes that the faith should be subject to science. That it should be informed by science, because science looks at the, the rules of reality, and we should accept their findings. On the surface, that doesn't sound so bad. What what does it, what harm does it do to our faith if a scientist tells us the number of uh, protons and neutrons in an atom somewhere? It does not. But that's not where this begins and ends. And we see this now in our time. We have the Vatican telling us that in multiple documents recently that the faith should be influenced by and informed by the social sciences with grave implications for that. And that is what Pope St. Pius X is addressing here. Even if he wasn't talking about the social sciences here, you see the same thinking. It applies directly to what we're dealing with in, our, in the church today. Religious experience and tradition. But this doctrine of experience is also under another aspect, entirely contrary to Catholic truth. It is extended and applied to tradition, as hitherto understood by the church, and destroys it. By the modernists, tradition is understood as a communication to others, through preaching by means of the intellectual formula of an original experience. To this formula, in addition to its representative value, they attribute a species of suggestive efficacy which acts both in the person who believes to stimulate the religious sentiment should it happen to have grown sluggish and to renew the experience once acquired it, and in those who do not yet believe to awaken for the first time the religious sentiment in them and to produce the experience. In this way is religious experience propagated among the peoples, not merely among contemporaries by preaching, but among future generations, both by books and by oral transmission from one to another. Sometimes this communication of religious experience takes root and thrives. At other times it withers at once and dies. For the modernists to live is a proof of truth, since for them life and truth are one and the same thing. Hence again it is given to us to infer that all existing religions are equally true, for otherwise they would not live. Faith and Science Having reached this point, venerable brethren, we have sufficient material in hand to enable us to see the relations which modernists establish between faith and science, including history also under the name of science. And in the first place, it is to be held that the object of the one is quite extraneous to and separate from the object of the other. For the faith occupies itself solely with something which science declares to be unknowable for it. Hence, each has a separate field assigned to it. Science is entirely concerned with the reality of phenomena, into which faith does not enter at all. Faith, on the contrary, concerns itself with divine reality, which is entirely unknown to science. Thus the conclusion is reached that there can never be any dissension between faith and science. For if each keeps on its own ground, they can never meet and therefore never be in contradiction. And if it be objected that in the visible world there are some things which appertain to faith, such as the human life of Christ, the modernists reply by denying this. For though such things come with the category phenomenon, still, in as far as they are lived by faith, and in the way already de de described have been by faith transfigured and disfigured, they have been removed from the world of sense and translated to become material for the divine. Hence it should be further asked whether Christ has wrought real miracles and made real prophecies, whether he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. The answer of agnostic science will be in the negative and the answer of faith in the affirmative. Yet there will not be on that account any conflict between them. For it will be denied by the philosopher as philosopher, speaking to philosophers and considering Christ only in his historical reality, 
and it will be affirmed by the speaker speaking to believers and considering the life of Christ is lived again by the faith and in the faith. Faith subject to science. Yet it would be a great mistake to suppose that, given these theories, one is authorized to believe that faith and science are independent of one another. On the side of science, the independence is indeed complete, but it is quite different with regard to faith, which is subject to science not on one but on three grounds. For In the first place, it must be observed that in every religious fact, when you take away the divine reality and the experience of it which the believer possesses, everything else, and especially the religious formulas of it, belongs to the sphere of phenomena and therefore falls under the control of science. Let the believer believe Leave the world if he will, but so long as he remains in it, he must continue, whether he like it or not, to be subject to the laws, the observation, the judgments of science and of history. Further, when it is said that God is the object of faith alone, the statement refers only to the divine reality, not to the idea of God. The latter is also subject to science, which, while it philosophies in what is called the logical order, soars also to the absolute and to the ideal. It is therefore the right of philosophy and of science to form conclusions concerning the idea of God, direct it in its evolution and to purify it of any extraneous elements which may become confused with it. Finally, man does not suffer dualism to exist in him, and the believer therefore feels within him an impelling need so to harmonize faith with science that it may never oppose the general conception which science sets forth concerning the universe. Thus it is evident that science is to be entirely independent of faith, while on the other hand, and notwithstanding that they are supposed to be strangers in each other, faith is made subject to science. All this, venerable brothers, is in formal opposition with the teachings of our predecessor, Pius IX, where he lays it down that, quote, In matters of religion, it is the duty of philosophy not to command, but to serve, but not to prescribe what is to be believed, but to embrace what it is to be believed with reasonable obedience, not to scrutinize the depths of the mysteries of God, but to venerate them devoutly and humbly. The modernists completely invert the parts, and to them may be applied the words of another predecessor of ours, Gregory the Ninth, addressed to some theologians of his time. Quote, some among you inflated like bladders with the spirit of vanity strive by profane novelties to cross the boundaries fixed by the fathers, twisting the sense of the heavenly pages, to the philosophical teaching of the rationals, not for the profit of their hearer, but to make a show of science. These, seduced by strange and eccentric doctrines, Make the head of the tail and force the queen to serve the servant. What Pius X is saying there is that faith should not be subject to science, and if anything, it should be inverted. It was once upon a time, so every scientist in the world was a trained philosopher. They would have been trained in Plato, Aristotle, Kant, name a philosopher, even if you find their philosophy terrible, they would have been familiar with them, because they would have understand that the philosopher is trying to make sense of the material world, and the methods of philosophy actually correspond very well to the methods of science, but most importantly, the ethics of philosophy correspond to the ethics of science, or should inform them at any rate. And once you have a philosophical grounding, it's not much of a stretch to get to a theological founding, especially when concerning ethics and the limits of what science should be. But having completely divorced science from philosophy, we now live in a time where most scientists don't really think there is much of a limit to what the scientists should do, except for what some vague oversight board tells them they can't do, usually for legal reasons. <laughs> that is kind of what he's driving at here, that faith and science should be linked together, but it should be science that is linked to the faith. And even that may be hard for some to understand, but remember, most of the scientists are a great. Many of the scientists that promote some ideas that we now consider that the scientific community accepts that on face value, even though a lot of Catholics may not just, may not agree with those ideas. A lot of those ideas came from Catholic priests who were actually scientists, George Lemaitre and a few others. So, again, this is what he's saying: that faith and science should be that science should be informed by faith and not faith dictated to by science. That is what he's saying. Some will not like that, but one will inform the other. And right now we live under the system where, according to the powers that should not be in Rome, that the social sciences should influence the faith. That should be concerning to everybody of goodwill. Let me know what you thought of this in the comments. Please hit like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. 
so to share this on social media, that helps too. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.